Hello everyone and welcome to our sessions on artificial intelligence. So in the first uh, introductory session, we just learned about what is image processing and what is computer vision. So in this session, we will actually try to do some operations on OpenCV as well as Python. So what is OpenCV and why do we need to use OpenCV in our, our nothing but in our tutorials is pretty simple. So how we use pandas, matplotlib and other libraries which were the support libraries for your machine learning algorithms. So similarly OpenCV is also a, a like a open computer vision library that will help you understand as well as learn your computer vision using python so it is a library in python opencv is nothing but a library in python so it will help you do some ma like image processing operations as well as your computer vision based operations so that is what your opencv is going to help you with so we are installing opencv library with python and we'll try to code opencv and we we'll try to use them so that we are able to do some image manipulation operations so to start off with opencv uh, is like the basic library which you can use to uh, do your image processing operation so it was basically used uh, in C++ so it was started around the year 2000 uh, it was basically written for C++ even the current package which you use that is for Python so the backend is written in C++ so this is how OpenCV evolved OpenCV was there from the beginning but now we have advanced models including your artificial intelligence model which can help us do some important AI based applications as well. Before OpenCV was just restricted to image processing operations, now you can even use some uh, like artificial intelligence based operations to on your OpenCV as well. So coming to the slide of what is OpenCV, so OpenCV is nothing but a library of programming functions mainly aimed at real time computer vision. So it is a library basically which has inbuilt functions or ready made functions which will help you do your image processing as well as your computer vision based operations. So as I told you the initial release was around June 2000 so it is al almost 20 years old. So this package or this uh, OpenCV library is 20 years old. It was basically written for C++ and the functions are in C++. So it was developed by Intel Corporation as well as Willow Garage and Jitsi. So they are the co-founders or the co-creators of OpenCV. So this OpenCV will try to use it and we'll try to uh, do some important mathematical operations as well. So this is a simple library like pandas or like scikit-learn or matplotlib which will help you do some image processing functions. So next step is how to install this OpenCV is the next step. So installation of OpenCV is pretty simple. So have you installed using pip installer? Similarly, you can install it using pip itself. So how to do it? Go to your CMD. So here I am in my CMD. So the default installation procedure is pretty simple. So you need to use pip install opencv dash python. So this is the command pip install opencv dash python is the command. So if you just click on enter, so then what it will do is it will try to actually get the packages if it is not installed. If it is already installed, then it won't give me an error and it will stay, uh, say that it is already installed. So it is pretty simple pip install opencv dash python that is how you install packages or that is opencv package so this simple package is enough to do all sorts of our uh, nothing but image processing application so if some packages are not installed it will automatically install all the required things so very important the command is pip install opencv dash python so that will help you install your opencv so opencv will help you do your uh, image processing based application. So this is how you install it as a single step installation procedure. Next what we'll do is we'll uh, try to use some simple uh, image processing applications or we'll do some image processing operations first. So now I've just created a Python program that is a new Python program. So how to actually use OpenCV that is for our first operation. So as I already told you here we'll be dealing with images not our regular data set. So how to actually use OpenCV is pretty simple. So to use OpenCV, you need to import the library first. So anything uh, that is not a part of your regular Python environment, you need to import the library. So you can use this uh, import CV2. That is nothing but import OpenCV2. So the name given to OpenCV is nothing but CV2 because it is the second version of OpenCV that is coming. So there were two versions. The, f the first one was OpenCV1 and the second one is OpenCV2. So the version that we'll be using is OpenCV2 and we won't and like OpenCV1 is obsolete. Open 
so we'll be using our open cv2 in all our application so most of the programs are done using open cv2 because op open cv1 is obsolete and not used currently so how to actually start using your open cv is pretty simple so if you want to read any images so how you have your pandas function so in your pandas function you have a simple operation so what is that uh, you would use pandas dot read csv to read your csv file so similarly here we have uh, you can use a alias name also it is not an issue so you can use open cv import cv to a cv that is fine or you can directly use cv2 also so what you can do is you need to initialize a variable so the variable is called as an image so i will call the variable as image you can call it as anything that is fine cv2 dot im read is the command so what is im read is nothing but image read so cv2 dot im read so im read is image read that is the command so then what you need to do is you need to mention the name of the image so mentioning the name of the image is pretty simple so look for the folder where you have it so here i have i have my im.py and my leaf.jpg so this leaf.jpg is in the same folder so this is a leaf picture of leaf so it is in the same folder so i can use it directly so i can directly use leaf.jpg and i can close it so what i can try to do is i can uh, run the program now so if i run the program if my image is properly taken so i won't get any errors because i've not printed anything so there'll be no errors appearing so if you want to print and see what is there so print statement will print it it doesn't display your image we'll see what this print statement does so if you are trying to print out your image see this is the thing that is getting formed so each and every pixel is in the form of a matrix so this is nothing but a multi dimensional matrix so each and every pixel will be in the form of a matrix which will have your rgb coordinates as well as the position so each and every pixel is being displayed here so all the pixels are not being displayed this dot 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 is indicating that there is continuation and some data is missing so this is what you get so whenever you read an image using open cv it is not the even the image is being read so everything is re happening in the terms of mathematical operations where you are reading the image in terms of multiple matrices so it is nothing but a multiple order or multi order matrices or what you can say it uh, what you can say is it is nothing but a um, complex set of matrices that is having the data of your rgb that is nothing but red green and blue color of a pixel as well as the uh, position or the coordinate points of the pixel so each and everything those uh, pixels have and that is getting stored as a multiple matrix in your uh, image so image is nothing but a data of all the matrix so since this printing is just printing out the matrices but if i want to see the same image so if i want to print it on the screen or if i want to display the image to any of the user or a client or anyone so what i will do is i'll use the cv2.im show so cv2.im show is nothing but the command where i can show something so what will i show that is nothing but the image but what is the image or where where have i stored the image so image is my image or my leaf image is stored in the variable called as image so this image is having my uh, data of the leaf.jpg so it is in the pixel information in the form of multiple matrices so if i'm printing it it won't display me the image it will display just the matrices but if i want to show the image or display the image itself so what i need to do is i need to initialize two things so one is the name of the like the variable which is storing the image data and as well as the name of the window so what is window is similarly uh, to matplotlib where you can get a graph in a new window here also you will get a new image in the window so you need to name the window so i can name it as a uh, leaf image as my window so leaf image will be my window name that is why i have named it as leaf image it should be a string always so guys very important and it should be a string always and this should be the variable so what is this variable this variable has the information of the image so we have re we have read the image and stored it in a variable called as image so if you want to display this cv2.im show window name comma name like name of the variable which is having the information of the image so if you can run the code so what will happen so i have got a window here so look at look closely here the name of the window is leaf image because i have told it in the program so that the name of the image will be leaf image so then i can see the whole window that is appearing that is nothing but my image of the leaf so this is the image of the leaf that i taken as the input the same thing appears so this is the part one that is the most 
simplest operation that you can start with your open cv that is reading an image and displaying the image but the next next question comes into picture is uh, just giving leaf.jpg so 99% of the people what they do is they store their uh, like python program somewhere else as well as uh, the image will be in a different location so if your image is in a different location obviously you need to mention the location or the path of your uh, Le uh, of the image so th that is very important so you can pass in the location of the whole image so then you can try to display the whole image but the problem here is one important thing you need to understand in python the slashes are reverse so you can't use the forward slash you need to use the backward slash so that is very important when you copy the path it will be the forward slash always but actually it is the reverse slash that works in python so now you can try out so you are getting the leaf image so very important guys everywhere this is not only in open cv anywhere in python if you are giving the path of the entire uh, folder or image or a csv file always try to use the back backslash option so the front slash is a default one that appears on the windows but you need to change it to backslash in order to work so very important so this is how you can read an image so this is one uh, particular step of i am read but uh, there are other options also here so what i can do here is i can use a comma zero so what happens if i use a comma zero we'll see here so in cv2 dot i am read so if i use a uh, uh, like a comma zero here so what happens we'll see just we'll try to see the same image so you can see that it has become a grayscale image so very important to understand whenever i use the zero option so what is this zero telling you that while reading the image itself please read it as a grayscale image so we'll try to understand the difference between a grayscale or a black and white image so you understood so colored image was there as a input so what you can see is if i don't mention this comma zero it will be read as a colored image so what is colored image you will have the colored image that is getting displayed here but if i want to read a grayscale image you need to mention comma zero so if you mention comma zero here so that is reading the image as a grayscale image so this is what is the difference here so how can i uh, use this or how can i understand the concept between black and white and grayscale is very important okay you can see the whole difference between the black and white image and grayscale image so what is the difference between your black and white and grayscale as i have already explained in my previous tutorial so in the grayscale image you have your intensities of black and white and you have the gray levels in between so whatever you do the whole information of the image is not lost but in black and white you just have black and white pixel so there is one threshold point so above the threshold point everything will be black and below the threshold point everything will be white so that is how your uh, grayscale image and black and white images are taken so what is the whole point of this is pretty simple to understand so whenever you take in your black and white image the lot of information is lost but whenever you take in grayscale image the information is retained but the color is lost so you don't have your red green and blue coordinates but all the information in the image can be retained but in black and white most of the properties are lost so you just have black and white pixel but here you have the pixels that is of the middle intensity gray levels also so that is the whole difference between your black and white and gray scale image so why gray scale image is preferred in image processing is in case of a color image the amount of your cpu taken or the amount of processing power needed is very high because you have red green and blue to be processed but in case of a gray scale image there is only one color that is nothing but black to white and in between you have the middle gray level so that is why it becomes much easier for processing so always in our open cv or in our image processing applications we prefer to have our gray scale images rather than black and white images or color images black and white it is hopeless because we lo lose all our information so information is not at all clear so if you show this image most of them cannot recognize this is a butterfly but the here you can recognize this is a butterfly uh, even though color image takes in more processing power this uh, takes in very less processing power to compute so we prefer this in place of our uh, colored images as well so that is how you can uh, identify grayscale and black and white so be clear with the difference between grayscale and black and white they both are not same they both are quite different so very important to understand that okay so the next thing what we'll be doing is pretty simple so we have read we know how to read a grayscale image as well as our 
colored image so we understood how to read it and how to display it so the next possible thing we can do is so the major thing is when you run this program you have this window appearing and you need to manually close it using this close button so if you don't manually close it using this close button so the image won't close so what you can do is you can use your keys so you can use the keys of your keyboard then you can try to close that window using the keys of the keyboard so how will i do it is pretty simple so you need to import another library called numpy so we'll import numpy as np so what we are trying to do is we are not trying to close it using our mouse so we don't need to navigate and close it uh, on the nothing but our close op button option on the nav navigation bar instead of that we can use a keyboard input and try to close our image window so if you want to close your image window using a keyboard interrupt or keyboard input so you can close it okay so what we will try to do is we will try to re uh, we would like to have a keyboard input so how to have a keyboard input it is pretty simple so what we are trying to do is pretty simple so we have a window here so if you want to close the window by using a keyboard interrupt so as i already showed you you, are, you need to manually exit the image window that will open so if you want to close it using any keyboard input so what you can do is you have an option to store the keys so first one first thing is you need to initialize a variable called as k so you can initialize any variable cv2 dot wait key so cv2 dot wait key is the is nothing but our uh command so k should be the uh, k should be in caps so we need to give it as zero so why zero or why one is see basically when you are telling it is zero you are telling it it is a default key uh, keyboard so the default keyboard you will be use, uh, using that is nothing but the uh, keyboard which is inbuilt or the keyboard which you have selected above that or the keyboard which comes by default so these are the keyboards that you are using so if you are connecting an external keyboard you can use it as one so since we are using a single our own keyboard that is default keyboard so we will give it as zero so what we are trying to do is we are waiting so cv2 has a function which will allow us to wait for a key so cv2 function will wait for a key until a key is entered so if a key is entered what we'll do is we'll cross check so how to cross check is pretty simple so if k is double equal to so what we'll try to do is we'll try to use the option of quit but how to how the keyboard takes input is pretty simple to understand so if you have already learnt about ascii and unicode you must have been aware that all the inputs that the keyboard takes is, is not in the alphabet so if you are typing even the name of python so it is taking the ascii characters of python then converting into the natural alphabets or the actual alphabets so anything that you type in the keyboard is always in the form of ascii or unicode so what this ord function does is so what i want my program to do is pretty simple so whenever i press the button q so the window should close so what i am trying to do here is i am using a variable called as k so i am waiting for an entry from the user so cv2 dot wait key of 0 is nothing but i am waiting for the entry from the user using his default keyboard so i am waiting for his entry so if he types q so if k is double equal to ord of q is nothing but unicode or unicode representation of the q so what will be the unicode representation of q you can check it out it is not a problem you can just print out ord of q you can check the unicode representation so what this is trying to do is you don't need to find out the unicode of q and then you, you need not uh, like put an if statement that k is e double equal to unicode of q but you have an inbuilt function in python called as ord function so this ord function will calculate the unicode of q so unicode is nothing but whatever you enter in the keyboard will not be the alphabet so even though if you enter q also the computer doesn't take q as an entry it will take the unicode or ascii characters so ascii or unicode is nothing but the method of keyboard interchange so you have the keyboard uh, parameters or anything that uh, for that matter everything uni decoding and encoding in the computer happens with the help of unicode and ascii so ascii just from uh, just has some 128 bit character list so it doesn't have special characters and all but unicode has everything it has new symbols it has different language symbols so each and everything unicode has so now we are checking whether the k value has the unicode of q or not so if i press q so then k will have the unicode value of q so then i am cross checking whether it is the unicode value of q so if it is true what i need to do is i need to destroy my windows 
so you have a function destroy all windows so destroy all windows what does it do is it destroys the cv2 windows okay so getting it so basically we took a variable called as k so cv2 dot wait key of 0 will take an input from your keyboard so how you have the input function for example you have an input function uh, in python which will take some input right so similarly we have cv2 dot wait key which will also take an input from the keyboard so if k is equal to q or in ord of q is nothing but a unicode value of q if i press the q button so then it will destroy my window so all the uh, window that i have created for displaying my image that will get destroyed okay so now i will load the program so now the leaf is loaded so i'm uh, right now i'm pressing all the other characters so it is not closing if i press q now so it should close so you can see now if i press the button q it closes so that is how actually this whole thing works so you can close the windows not with the help of your normal i mean with your mouse you can close it with the help of the key that is being pressed so it need not be a key also so what we can try to do is even we can uh, try to give a delay of some seconds and then try to close it lot of conditions can be given so it is not that only uh, keyboard inputs must be taken you can take in a lot of cases you can try to do it with whatever case you want so that is how you can actually uh, try to take in all the particular uh, like image and you can also close the window using the option so this is one of the operations that we can try to do okay so the next thing that i will be trying to show is pretty simple so what we did right now was we took an image and we uh, we were able to show it on a window so if you wanted to quit we can take in the keyboard inputs or we can quit normally so that is the thing that we did but the problem is after taking in the image uh, nowhere i was able to actually save my image so even though it displayed on the window it didn't save anywhere so that is the reason i have a command to save all the image that i have done so what i will do is since i already know that if i give a zero here it will take a grayscale image or if i don't mention it will take a color image i will take the input of the grayscale image so this leaf image whatever i have here so that will be taken as a grayscale image so i wanted to store it as leaf grayscale so this image will be taken as a grayscale image so if i'm giving zero here it will be taken as a grayscale image i want to store it somewhere so how to store it is pretty simple so what i will try to do is i have a, a small a command cv2 dot i am right so i am read i am right or opposite command so i am read will read from the directory i am right will write to the particular directory so that is what i am right is doing so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to write it or we are trying to save so how you have control s control shift s to save some file in microsoft word or microsoft any program for your example so here uh, similarly you can use your uh, cv2 dot i am right so i am right will write it so the if you don't mention the default uh, like if you don't mention the directory it will take the default directory where this leaf image was present so this leaf image is in my desktop my image uh, folder then leaf.jpg so if i don't mention anything it will take in that uh, directory by default so if i do mention it will change the directory that is not a uh, problem at all so it is simple to understand so what i want to name it as uh, leaf underscore uh, gray so leaf grayscale image dot jpeg so this is the name i want to give it to my grayscale image so then what which image do i want to save so that is the question so which is the variable that i want to save so image is a variable where i read my image using the cv2 dot im read so the same image i will try to save it so if you want to see the image also it is the same thing cv2 dot im im show will show the image but nowhere it will save it so let us see uh, just by the single command whether it saves or not so i will just execute this command so if everything is proper so it doesn't pose any error so if i go back to my folder so there will be another image called as leaf underscore gray which will be an again colored or grayscale so it is a grayscale image so very uh, simple tactics so i could save an image by giving an option or giving a command of cv2 dot i am right so i am right will write to the particular window so if i want to do the same thing that is nothing but if i want to save it in a directory i should mention all the particular path so now if i try to save it 
i mean it will replace the or it will overwrite the whole thing because i am giving the same location so the same thing will be overwritten so you can give it in any directory so that you want to save those particular image in an in another directory so that is what you will be doing with the option of your cv2.im right so this is a simple tutorial on how to actually read and write an image for the first example so this was the basic operations are uh, related to open cv so in the next tutorials what we'll be doing is we'll be dealing with lot of other mathematical operations or image processing operations like adding two images let us like one image on top of the other if you want to add so if you want to rotate scale shift then you if you want to do some thresholding blurring operations so all those things we'll be dealing in the next session so with this you can understand how to read an image and how to save an image and the basic difference between a grayscale image colored image and a black and white image so thank you guys and i hope you have enjoyed this session thank you